and welcome back to On The Workbench. Today we're going to be diagnosing a problem with my sump pump and that I've got a video before about installing this sump pump with battery backup. Last night the power went out and we had a little bit of a problem with the battery backup not kicking on. So now it's time to figure out why I had to get out the gasoline generator and connect in the AC uh, pump and pump switch to get the work. Today it's time to diagnose what happened. So the first thing I'm going to do is to actually stick my, is to get access to my switch here and try to manually activate the pump. And we're going to see what happens and what sounds we hear when I try to actually raise the trigger for the DC pump. So if you heard that sound, that was the sound of the pump trying to start, but not starting. So we've got a problem with what's going on. We've got one of three possible answers. One answer could be that the pump is bad. That's number one. Option number two could be the battery's bad. And the third option could be that the, uh, the charger or the mechanism connected to the battery is bad. So let's try to figure out what we've got and what our most likely suspects might be. So here's the unit here. And on top here, we've got a, an alarm switch here. The alarm is going off. I hit mute here for the sake of the video. Otherwise, you'd hear it chirping. That's clue number one. But we're going to leave this connected here, and we're going to open up the case. And then with the case open, what we've got is we've got some battery terminals at the top here, positive and negative. We're going to check the voltage across those terminals to see what volts we're getting with a multimeter. So now with the multimeter set to DC, I'm going to touch the leads here, and we're going to see what we get. And we're getting 13.6 volts, if you can see that on the screen there. Not bad. Not bad, but the next step of my diagnostic process needs to be able to disable the trickle charger by unplugging it from the wall. Then we're going to recheck the volt and see what we get whenever this is actually not plugged into the trickle charger. All right, now we unplugged it from the wall. Now we're going to retest the volts on the battery again. And now we're getting 10.5, 10.4, just touch under 10.5. This really should be reading about 13.2 on a fully charged 12 volt battery. This is a deep cycle marine battery and it should be reading about 13 volts. I know they say 12, but really it's about 13.2 for a fully charged battery. And we are not getting that. So I think we're getting somewhere in figuring out what's going on. So the next step here is we're gonna to need to, so we can tell number one, our trickle charger here is indeed putting a correct voltage to the battery to charge it and top it off. And so I'm led to believe right now that we got a problem actually with the battery. It's not to say there's not a problem with the circuit possibly overcharging the battery, but just in looking at the battery, I suspect that we've got an issue with the battery. So now we're gonna disconnect the, the leads from the battery or the uh, connectors from the battery and then check the battery itself. Just like that. And then now I'm gonna use my Schumacher battery tester I've got another video all about this. I'll put a card up in the description about this battery here, or about this battery tester. And so I'm gonna put this onto the positive, the black onto the negative terminal. That'll power our tester here. And then now this is supposed to have, uh, I believe it's 730 cold cranking amps here. So we're gonna enter our test mode. We're gonna go with a sealed battery, SAE 730. And my battery tester here is saying, indicating that this has a bad cell. So this is not able to actually hold any load, which is why we're getting the problem when the pump is calling it because we've got a bad battery. So I feel pretty confident we know our battery's bad. It's not to say that anything else is bad, but I feel like that the pump switch is actually calling for the, uh, the battery to activate. Now that's probably okay, but we got some pretty definitive proof that our battery uh, has a bad cell on it. So now we need to go out and get a new battery. Okay, so we just got back from the store and here's what I picked up. I got two AGM deep cycle marine batteries. Uh, the, the marine batteries are important because they allow you to drain all the way down and recharge and come back to life. So I got two of those. These are group size 24. I wish they would have had slightly larger ones, but I really wanted the AGM because it's a higher quality battery. Of course, there's a hardware that comes with the batteries. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to take, and I've got a case of the second battery here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I got two extra cables here. I'm going to create one of these. This is going to be turned into a positive terminal with a, with the help of some red electrical tape. And I'm going to wire these two uh, in parallel so it still remains 12 volts and the float charger will still charge them both. But then I'll have two batteries and twice as much capacity with these 24 or these group size 24 batteries 
to deal with uh, what's going on here. So now the next task I need to do is to assemble these cables. I'm going to have the lugs on one going into the screw terminals on the other. And so now it's time to assemble the cable. One quick change I want to point out here on camera uh, is that I actually switched from the batteries you're going to see through the next little bit of the video to these deep cycle marine batteries. The batteries I first showed you were not deep cycle. They were just regular marine batteries. They were AGM, which I actually prefer over these standard type batteries. But you need to have deep cycle batteries because they'll actually provide a better, longer charge. You can run them all the way down and bring them back to life, unlike a regular battery. But you can only use in about the first 20% or so, give or take. And then it won't have the amps to be able to actually deliver the oomph to actually produce the energy that you need to power your pump. So I'm going to switch to these. I know you're going to see the other batteries in between. They look very similar. But make sure you're looking for and getting the deep cycle batteries. We'll continue on with the video. Okay, here's the first cable out of the package. This one here, I went with 32 inch cables. This was the longest they had at the store I went to. It would have been nice to have 36, but you needed something here, some length to be able to go in and out of the battery cases on each of them. And so we've got the length. This is a four gauge cable. I like the fact that these are made in the USA. That's pretty attractive to me. As you can see with the made in USA tag there. And then we've got epoxy coated terminals. I like these because they're red and black, especially since I'm using two black wires. All they had were black wires at the store and I need to make one of these positive. So that's what the red electrical tape's for. So one of these is gonna be negative and one of these is gonna be positive. All right, these come out like that. So let's start, make this one here a positive cable. There we go. So now we got that one. Let's open up the other cable. This one did not come with a Made in USA band. I wonder if it was a return from somebody else. And then here we're going to take this, put that over our terminal. You notice how the negative one here is just slightly smaller. If I can find a washer, I'm going to come back with a washer just to make sure I've got a good solid connection here uh, with that terminal. I've also got these connecting posts here that I'm going to use to be able to uh, help seed and protect the battery where I connect the lug size here, lug side. So we got the felt pads and we also have our hardware from the batteries. Let me go through the hardware here and see if I can borrow some of the hardware and I've got the bolts off my old one. So now let's get one of these installed into the old case. We're going to start to do that by actually peeling off the terminal covers. And so now let's put this one into our case right back there. All right, in the case here, we're going to open this up, which is already empty. I've already moved the old battery. I had to take it back to deal with the core charge. This one that came with the Barracuda pump is designed for a group size 27 battery. So there's plenty of room in here for this, uh, for this battery. Okay, so to get started here, I'm gonna take the positive wire, put that on, drop on the washer that came with the battery, and then tighten the nut. And then we're gonna put on the negative terminal cable, put on the washer, and then put on the nut. Okay, there we go. So now we got this one set up, but now we need to be able to actually extend the battery to be able to connect to the other battery. Let me remove the trickle charger from this, like that. And now I'm gonna set this, mover, maneuver this one into place into the cab or into the closet. All right, so you can see that one back there. Now let's go work on the other battery. Before we go any further working with this here, we need to deal with this battery cable here. It's black, but it needs to be red to indicate that this is for a positive terminal. So I'm gonna mark this with some red electrical tape just to ensure there was no ambiguity that this is a positive cable. Put some red electrical wire here around the end, electrical tape around the end. A little more around the other end, so it's very intentional. I'm gonna do it again somewhere towards the midpoint. Let 
there we go. Now we can clearly tell that this is the positive terminal cable. So at all ends, we know it's positive. And we're going to peel off the terminal covers on the other battery here, just like this. And we're going to take, here's our other case here. This actually came with a strap. I don't think I'm going to end up using the strap for strapping it down. Certain boats you may want that, but not for this application. There we go. The battery is going to go in just like that. Now let's actually move this into the closet. Now you can see I got both batteries placed here. There's the one that's connected to the pump here is at the rear. Our extra one here to add to our capacity is off to the side. And so the first thing we're going to do is wire up the positive cable between the two. And so I'm going to take the lug end here that I built. And I'm going to place that over the lug end here. And we're going to have to tighten that one up. And then we're going to run that to the connector here, the screw connector on the other battery. And we're going to put our washer and our bolt on to get that connected. We'll have to come back and tighten these up a little bit later. There. And I'm just going to tighten up the lug here on this battery. There we go. We got a pretty solid connection there. Now let's come back with the other cable here on the black. So it's be very important with these batteries, these wires don't accidentally touch each other. So we're going to put our black cable on here, just like that. And then we're going to connect the black on the other one so that since these are in parallel, it'll still remain at the same 12 volts. And so now you can see in the middle with the red tape here, we know that's the positive cable. Here's the black cable. And now with all of our connections tight, the first thing I'm going to do is put on the cover for the secondary one. This may take a little bit of fishing around to get the wires to come out in just the right spot. Ideally, they come out right where those little, uh... there we go, that's perfect on that one. There we go. And your battery can still breathe. And we got that one all sealed up. And then now we need to put the cover on to the rear. Now the cover on the rear is not going to fully seat the way that you might want it to because this wasn't intended for this setup here. Because this is intended for the cables coming out the top rather than them coming out the side like the other ones are. But that's okay. And then finally, we need to reconnect our AC adapter so that we have a trickle charger on these batteries so that they can be maintained. And then we will plug that in and we should be in business. And so now with everything here, let's try to manually activate the pump and we'll listen for the sound that it makes when I manually activate the battery pump. Some additional testing uh, indicated that the failure actually ended up being in the pump I was able to verify that by being able to make sure that I was getting 12 volts out of the unit, checking that the fuse was okay, and then I eventually tried to directly wire the pump to a good 12 volt battery. Pump would not kick on, and so I took everything out of my sump pit except for the main electric powered pump, took it back to Menards, and the people there were fantastic. I also had my receipt, also very important point, had the receipt in hand from three years ago and was they were able to swap out just the battery backup components because that's what had failed is that it ended up being actually just a bad pump right there. 
Um, but they couldn't replace just that, so they had to replace this, and this was as close as they could. People were super helpful to me. Uh, not sponsored by Menards at all, but they were super helpful and able to uh, swap this out, no problem. Uh, have a five-year warranty on this piece now, and so things are good. So I'm gonna unbox this in a separate video, uh, but then the assembly will go in just like you saw on the previous video, maybe not previous, but on the original installation video. But I'll show you what you get if you get this kit separately, another video, and then we'll jump forward in this video uh, with the final testing of my batteries all in series. And now here's what everything looks like plugged in. So then here is the console. It's actually much easier to see in the dark. It shows 97%, very quick at a glance display. You got the power icon. And then the other icon here, if I tilt this up, indicates that the system is showing a red, but I don't know that that's necessarily bad. And now right here, I can simply push the test button in green. And I can hear the pump run. So we're good. That makes me happy. We can check the battery voltage, 13.4, gives us a percent. The final bit to this to make sure everything is well is after you manually check the switch, actually by pressing it up, you're gonna to need to press the test reset button for about five seconds or so to change this light from red to green so that you know everything's okay. And then you'll be done with your setup. And then if you see any lights on here, just at a glance, you know I open the sump pump closet door and I will immediately know, hey, there's a problem and I can see the percent on the battery and everything's there. So I like this at a glance notification and I like it with the float charger there. It's gonna sit here and keep the batteries topped off, which is good. So I think that's gonna wrap this up for this video. Hope you found this useful and interesting and have a great day. Bye.